Okay. So we are back talking about batch reinforcement learning. So the last time was uh, my feeble attempt to, to discuss some of the ways you can get opportunistic bounds for various algorithms. And uh, one of the reasons I didn't go too deep into that is because it's just nasty. But these results are not as clean, not as nice as we all wish they should be. And uh, yeah, before that, so this was this you know function approximation. Before that, we talked about the tabular case. There were some CRISPR results there, but if you recall, there was also this negative result that said that you can have uh, a situation where you choose a behavior policy, no matter how you choose it, I can come up with a um, with an MDP with the given number of uh, states and actions. Know the number of states. Well, I can fit the number of states to be large enough compared to the effective horizon then. I can come up with this MVP such that if uh, the number of observations collected is not exponential um, in the effective horizon, it's a to the power of h, that was the bound, uh, then no algorithm can uh, decide what to do. Uh, so that's for of policy optimization uh, or identifying the best policy, as some people like to say. Uh, so that's an exponential lower bound that already happens in the tabular MDPs uh, case. So the result was something like this. For every epsilon and comma, uh, and for every ergotum that is a sound ergotum with constant uh, um, suboptimality gap and constant probability of failure. So it's like this constant, constant sound ergotum. Uh, all right, so there are two A's. Uh, and there, there is there is an A, which is the number of actions. Um, if you let H to be H comma epsilon, this effective horizon at accuracy epsilon, then there is an MDP. Uh, such that, yeah, the, the action spaces just has the required number of actions. And, uh, oh, yeah, like we started with a behavior policy. Um, then uh, the number of observations that this algorithm is going to need on this MDP um to satisfy this accuracy requirement with high probability uh, the number of observations has to be i don't know some universal constant times a to the power of h right so the behavior policy really is a is a policy uh, a memoryless policy that depends on the states and the actions. So I should rather say that for every S state space size and every uh, action set size, every behavior policy, every epsilon and gamma, and every algorithm that is sound. And, and this, this happens to be true 
as long as s is greater than h comma epsilon i mean you can replace this h with the minimum of s and h comma epsilon um so that's exponential uh if you have at least two actions uh in the planning horizon so that's if your sampling plan is based on a behavior policy so it's policy based sampling plan and we also saw that in the opposite case when you have state action based sampling so such a sampling plan would be i don't know for every sample size You should tell me which state action pairs you want to see. I think it's just like, yeah, you should just tell me which state action pairs you want to see um, for every n. And uh, then you can have a, a sampling plan. Um, such that this exponential dependence is avoided, simply choose each state action pair equally often, given your budget. And then model-based algorithms pretty much in any ways of, of solving the model and also estimating the model within a certain accuracy. Doesn't really matter which of the, the likely models you choose. Uh, is going to lead to a polynomial sample complexity. So the, the number of state action pairs that you need doesn't need to grow really harsh with uh, the epsilon and the delta. It's, it's like, I don't know, some, some polynomial function of S and A and H and one over epsilon squared. That's it. So there is a difference. So, so these are called, uh, uh, let, let me call them Z design. Because Z is this like, I don't know the, sometimes I like to write Z for the set of state action pairs. So here you're choosing a bunch of state action pairs. So there is policy-based designs that is Z design. And uh, of course you could have an adaptive design, which, you know, tries something, sees the result. And then after that, it tries other things. And since already Z design, this passive design that a priori just decides that, oh, I'm going to uniformly uh, observe uh, transitions over the state action uh, space and uh, rewards uh, similarly. Since already that is, uh, that gives you poly polynomial sample complexity, of course, adaptive designs are going to do that too. Um, so we see some difference between, um, um, let, let's call these pi designs or policy-based designs and Z designs, state action pair-based designs. And uh, so the last time I, I didn't go that much into the details, but uh, it, it seems that if you try to extend things to the case when you have function approximation, either state-based or state action-based, let's say linear function approximation, then with planning, we had some positive results like there is the q pi realizability assumption which means that somehow the mdp and the feature map which is in this case of, of the second type uh, are such that for all policies in the mdp the resulting action value function lies in the span of the features. 
So in that case, we can design area terms which by and large uh, enjoy a polytime sample complexity result. Um, we could try something harder like Q star realizability. So that was when only Q star is realizable. Um, and in that case, so this, is, this is a positive case. This is in general a negative case. So even per planning, you, you can't do much. Um, and you can continue V pi realizability, V star realizability, you name it. You can combine these and so forth. Um, so sometimes when if planning, we have a positive result like here, then we may hope that that result is going to translate into a positive result in a batch learning situation because the, the, the difference between planning and batch learning is that here in planning, you're adaptively choosing the state action pairs at which we are observing things and here we're passively choosing that means in advance well either a policy or or state action pairs uh, and so this can only be worse or harder so I don't know. Sample complexity wise, uh, the ratio goes like this. So batch learning must be harder than uh, than planning, where you can adaptively choose uh, what to observe. And so, if for already planning, you have some big thing here that says that oh, you can't do something. Then of course, for batch learning, you can't do the same thing. But if for planning, you have an upper bound that says that, well, under this situation, like you pyrolyze, but you can do something, then maybe that translates to batch learning too. All right, um, so with this result, so we had this very first result that said something bad about, um, bad about batch learning with this pi designs uh, for the tabular case. So you might suspect that that result on its own already uh, implies that with pi designs, uh, this policy, behavior policy based designs, uh, things are not going to work very well. The only catch here is that if you trivially want to cons like uh, translate this into a result that holds for function approximation with q pi realizability then you would need to choose uh the dimensionality so it was a trivial choice not, not really caring that much about the details of this construction the dimensionality would be s times a and here S was as large as age. And so if you want to rewrite this lower bond in terms of uh, just the dimension uh, without any mention of, of the state space, then of course uh, you have the number of actions is, so here, here the, the state space is basically age. So you see that the dimension is uh, h times a. And so this lower bound in terms of the dimension translates into c naught times and uh, d over h to the power of h. So is that exponential in h?
not really, right? Like if age goes to infinity, this goes to zero. Because if once age is bigger than D, the D over age is smaller than one, and then the higher parts, you take the better it is. Uh, so this lower bound doesn't immediately give you that the situation is, uh, is hopeless. Uh, so we may hope that things are gonna work out. Today we will see that they don't really. So there is a bunch of recent papers. There's so many of these new papers that I will not be able to talk about um, all of them. Uh, there is a very, very recent one. I'm going to leave that out because uh, I didn't have time to read it yet. But there are two papers I want to talk about. There is this paper by uh, Ruo Song, Guang, Dean Foster, and Shem Kakadi. So that's, that's the first paper. And then the other paper is by Andrea Zanatta. And uh, if you come uh, to the other theory seminars, uh, both papers have been presented there. Uh, you, you may stop watching now. Um, this is not true. Uh, I'm gonna put my own spin on these, uh, on these things. So if you're interested in the spin, then you can stay. Um, but these papers are, um, are, are, are looking at, at this case and they have an assorted uh, set of negative results that tell us that things, uh, the sample complexity of um, even just policy evaluation uh, can be uh, exponentially large. So without further ado, so let's start with this paper, which is uh, the precursor to the other paper of Andrea, and then we're gonna compare the two. So this first paper has two main results. One of them is in the appendix. And the first result just says this, for every dimension D, every integer D, which is going to be the dimensionality of the feature map, and uh, this is for a finite horizon setting. So for every age horizon, this is going to be interpreted as a horizon. There is um, an MDP feature map pair, a featureized MDP. Um, such that uh, usual things, uh, so the feature map, you know, the okay, so the MDP is has states and actions and transitions and rewards, and uh, the feature map is for state action pairs, and it's d-dimensional, and the feature vectors are properly norms, so the one norm is not too big, the rewards are in, in zero, one. Uh, it happens that the number of states is going to be small. And the number of actions is going to be really small. It's just two actions. And uh, so not only these MDPs, but also this, um, Design distribution. So nu is uh, a sequence of age distributions over the state action pairs. So this is the distribution uh, that um, you can observe you can make observations of, of the state action pairs uh, for the eighth stage of the process. So the, the design is going to be that, I guess this is an inhomogeneous setting. So, so this transition kernels is, is a sequence of transition kernels. And so it's important that you have uh, 
access to uh, each of the transition kernels. And uh, this design is chosen in such a way that uh, it's kind of not that bad. And the feature map is chosen in, in also such a way that it's not that bad. So in particular, the following holds. So first, um, QHPy lies in the span of the features. So this is just the span of, of capital phi. Uh, for, for every age and every pi, nevertheless policy of the MDP. So that's your QPi realizability. So without QPi realizability, other than planning case, we had a hard time. So why don't we look at case when QPi realizability holds? If anything, this is this is where things are gonna work. Um, the second condition is that the feature map is not terribly ill-conditioned. It's actually well-conditioned. As, as, as well-conditioned as it can ever get um, for each of the distributions, new one, new age. Right, so the second condition uh, is similar to uh, or core set thing. So in the core set assumption, when you have a core set uh, in optimal design, then basically this holds. And this is kind of like a, an optimal design criterion. This is when least squares regression works with linear prediction with these features. Then you have good extrapolation. So here we are saying that, okay, let's, uh let's let's consider the case when things are really nice uh both in terms of realizability and both in terms of whether supervised learning would succeed and then comes uh the bad news for every uh, batch algorithm which is doing of policy estimation and which is uh, which is sound in the same sense as before it's like up to constant accuracy and with a constant probability not failing and, and providing a constant accuracy estimate of the value of um, of a policy at some initial state so there is there is an initial state here um, so you have this sound ergotum and this sound ergotum for every policy of the MDP is going to require a number of observations from this design that is exponential in the horizon. Okay. And uh, by the way, so this is a deterministic policy, so, well, a deterministic MDP. So this is pretty bad news. Um, so if you just want to do off policy estimation, and you were thinking that QPi realizability is going to be sufficient under the condition that was in planning sort of sufficient, like this is a core set assumption. If you have access to core states, then you can just use those. So that's your design. Uh, and this condition is going to be satisfied. If you saw that that's sufficient uh, for a polynomial uh, sample complexity, then that's not going to fly. This is this is the result. 
And you don't need too many actions. You don't need too many states. Um, it's um, it's pretty damning. So in a way, what this says is that when we are running these ergotums and, uh, well, if you actually write out the, uh, the bounds and, and the results, then, well, I was just arguing that you will generally need extra conditions like that the, uh, the density of uh, the target policy uh, with respect to uh, the distribution induced by the behavior policy, if, if you were following some behavior policy, is bounded. If, if you had this new distribution, you can write the same thing, uh, that it's uniformly bounded, uh, and or that you have this closeness assumptions. And then this is the assumption, by the way, that, that we see being satisfied as second condition there in the theorem. So you need at least this or that. Like we, we had seen this, that in all the results, we're going to need some assumption like one or two here. And uh, it seems that something like that might be necessary because if you remove these, then you have this negative result that says that the sample complexity is going to be exponential. So either the closeness or the assumption that somehow the distribution that uses, that generates the data is close to the distribution induced by the policy on the MDP uh, and, the, and the trajectories uh, um, are close to each other. Uh, either of these uh, are going to be necessary. So, all right, uh, that's bad enough. But, uh, well, there is a bunch of ways in which way uh, things are even worse. Uh, So here you might suspect that maybe the difficulty is because um, this distribution here is over the state action pairs and that's somehow not really natural. Uh, so maybe you wanna follow some behavior policy. Although I would argue that we already saw that if you follow some behavior policy, then even in the tabular case, it could be really bad, even though this result doesn't immediately imply that things can be bad, we might suspect that things are still bad if we follow a behavior policy. And in a tabular case, rather interestingly, we saw that, on the other hand, if you are able to control where you're getting the samples, uh, which state action pairs you're getting the sample set. So that's like the, the, the Z design. And uh, so in the temporary case, so this, these two things would be satisfied by this uniform distribution. So this, this thing, and I'm like, yeah, okay, this, this type of result that this type of sampling that you choose a distribution over the state action pairs, Okay, not really distribute, but then you choose a distribution and, and you're sampling from that distribution or, or you just choose which state action pairs to observe, it causes some variation, but it's not uh, usually a big deal. Like the analysis can become much more difficult to do. So this is called random design in statistics where you have a sampling distribution and the way you generate the observations is by sampling from that sampling distribution. So that's a random design. And, and the fixed design case is, is what was here. So that's like the Z design. So that's called fixed design. 
so there is some difference between random design, fixed design, some settings, statistical settings. Uh, but in this setting, uh, we, we don't expect big difference between the two. And we see that for this fixed design, Z design, uh, you can get poly sample complexity. Here, in the case when you have features, QPy reliability, despite QPy reliability, despite having a good design distribution, uh, so this is the good design condition, you can't have that. But OK, so we, we still don't know whether if we switch from random design to, to policies, pi design. So from Z design to pi design, are we going to get similar bad um, negative results? And so that's, that's the next thing. So the next theorem says that um, it's exactly this. Uh, so for every D and every H, there exists. A uh, featureized MDP and uh, okay, so the features are, are the usual. And um, da da da, rewards are as usual in zero one. Um, the number of actions is still two. The number of states is still the age. Um, so in this case, this is going to be a bona fide stochastic um, MDP with stochastic transitions. Rewards are going to be deterministic. Um, and there exists a behavior policy, and there exists a target policy such that it's kind of the same story. Uh, it's a little bit weaker. So the action value function of the target policy lies in the features. And uh, if you execute the behavior policy, it results in this um, state action distributions at all stages, OK? And uh, you will have that the feature, the moment matrix of the features, OK? This is too ugly. It is well conditioned. Uh, but no matter how you choose your sound algorithm. The number of samples that this algorithm is going to need um, is going to be exponential. Mm -hmm.
So even if you switch to by design, I mean, this is a slightly weaker design though, right? Because uh, here, um, we only assume that the target policies action wave function can be represented with the features even but but the algorithm is given this so it's like it's given the features it knows the the target uh policy and yet it's unable to uh um figure out its value and and the reason that that is happening is very similar to the proof that we had before where you just have this like exponentially small probability of observing the rewards when you're following this behavior policy even though the features are well conditioned um so at this stage, you may be wondering about, okay, like this is all about OPE. So this is OPE of policy estimation. This is also OPE. How about of policy optimization? Um, so is, what's the relationship between of policy optimization and of policy evaluation uh, which one is harder and then one might guess that well of course of policy optimization needs to be harder than uh, of policy estimation so you can make a little proposition that so the sample complexity of I don't know of policy optimization oops is at least as large as that of, of policy evaluation. Um, and the reason you can, like the reason this holds is uh, because if you have a specific um, ergotum that is good, at of policy evaluation then you can derive an ergotum which is going to use this this uh, of policy evaluation ergotum um, sorry it's the other way around if you have a good ergotum that solves uh yeah of policy optimization Then of course you're gonna have some ergotum that is good at of policy evaluation. The way you can do that is that well we have this ergotum that can solve policy optimization problems, but now we want to solve policy evaluation problem. So how is a policy evaluation problem given to us? Well, we have some data, right? From an MDP and we have some target policy that we need, need to evaluate. So this comes from some MDP M. So this is the target policy to be evaluated. And we need to produce an estimate of the value of this as like uh, you're given an initial state as well. So what's the, what's the value of this target policy at this initial state? And so what you can do is that you introduce a, a new state. And so we have this of policy optimization uh, ergotum and uh, imagine doing this. Um, you introduce a new MDP, 
which has this new state and it has in this new state it has two actions it can go i don't know up and then uh why going up uh well okay whatever like it receives some reward r and then it loops back in this observing state that loops back to itself uh keeps receiving the reward r so if you ever choose action up then uh then the reward of that that is generated is r over one minus gamma okay and uh the other alternative in this uh, state is to choose action down if you choose action down then you go to mdpm and the start state of that and then you can do your thing so if we have this off policy optimization algorithm that can work with data generated from M, then we can emulate that we have data generated from this, this new MDP, new families of MDPs, let's call it family like this, or like a, a, an instance like this, M of R, where R is this, this value between zero and one that we're gonna choose. Okay, so this is this, is this MDP that is composed of the original MDP and the new state, and then these two actions, and then this observing state, and then it has this dynamics and so forth. Um, and so we can emulate that we have data from this MDP, of course, because, uh, well, we know very well how the dynamics of this MDP differs from the dynamics of the original MDP. Uh, so the unknown parts uh, for the unknown parts where like we don't know the mdp but we have data for that and for the new parts we know how to generate data so whatever data generating plan you want i can generate data from this right by by resorting to gen data generation from the original mdp right um so i can emulate data generation in this new mdp so i can then call Argotum A on this new MDP and tell it to solve the off policy optimization problem. And I do that by first calling it for the value of one half when R, R is given the value of one half. Okay, so that's my initial choice. And then I observe whether the Argotum chose down or up. So if the choice is down, then the algorithm decided that it's worse to go to the MDP. And um, Something is fishy.
I'm missing something because I was not using the target policy in any ways in this construction. So what is what is missing? Right? Like I want to avoid this target policy. And the target policy plays no role at the moment, but somehow it should. Um, can you make it so that the, the policy is frozen into, like it's a Markov reward process resulting from that policy, and then the only action is going to be at the root state? Right. So it should impact somehow the data generation process. Um, <clears throat> OK. Let's leave this for what? Can you, uh, can you explain how? Like, if it feels like generating the data under the marker reward process is the same as generating the reward under MDP under a fixed policy. Right? Sure, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so um, Okay, I guess the reason uh, this confusion arose is because I didn't uh, specify how the data generation works, right? And so if we say, all right, let's consider the Z designs, right? So someone fixed the state action pairs that they want to generate the data from. Um, it's not very clear of what happens if you, I guess, uh, so the Z design, it, it doesn't, like you have state action pairs, it has no role of target policies whatsoever. So I guess if, if it was uh, this Pi designs, I don't know, then yeah, it's not that dissimilar. So I don't know, I, okay. I'm blanking on this, sorry about this. Uh, I, I thought that this was kind of trivia and uh, it is probably trivia, but <laughs> somehow, yeah, like need to work the target policy into the scheme. By the way, so here, uh, just to give you the clue, the way you want to finish is kind of like, Oh yeah, if uh, somehow uh, the off policy optimization algorithm decides that it's better to go down, that means that somehow, like here you want to get the, the value of the target policy. So you want to ensure that uh, there, so that, that's why you wanted to restrict, right? The, the actions to the, uh, to the actions taken by, by the target policy. Uh, I, I guess it's like maybe a little bit more subtle, right? Uh, so if you say that, like if you have an algorithm that is good at off policy optimization, uh, does it also mean that, <laughs> well, if it was that, yeah. Does it mean that like for, for the 
modified MDPs where you also like remove actions and whatnot, it's also good at those. If you have such a strong ergotum, then of course you can do this, right? So that you delete from the design all the actions that are not chosen by the policy, thereby restricting uh, all the observations to the uh, um, to those that would be generated from the target policy. But it feels like a very weak argument. And in that case, uh, basically here you would get a Markov reward process. Uh, which is tied to this target policy. And then here, if the target term chooses down, that means that the value of the target policy at S0 is bigger uh, than one half um, times one over one minus gamma. And uh, in this case, uh, the next value for R0 should be three quarter. And then you can do this binary search kind of thing on the top. And if you have a target accuracy of epsilon, then with log one over epsilon of this course, you are done. Uh, it feels a bit too weakish. Uh, so maybe I should challenge everyone to think about some better construction. This is not, this is not as good as I thought it's going to be. Uh, hi, Chaba. Just, I don't yeah. know if it's going to work. Just why don't we just uh, put uh, two MDP, just uh, up action lead to uh, MDP and it lead to the state S0, but down action leads to um, S0 uh, with an action just leads to S0A. And this A is chosen by target policy. And this is also the MDP. And uh, by taking down action, there is some reward R something. And then we can actually compare between we star and we, we target, and we can get something like epsilon optimizing conclusion. I see, I see what you mean. Uh, you want one, like you want Q value estimation or something like that. Yeah, yeah. it's a little bit more clear whether this has, um, because here uh, the OPE is going to go for the Q star in a way, like in, in both cases, it, it goes for the Q star values. And so it's like, how do we force it to forget about all the other actions at all the other states? Yeah, but, but <laughs> by the definition of ap uh, epsilon optimizing, uh, we only need that uh, some- well, We are going from, from the, the difficult problem to the simple problem. So here we are trying to, estimate the value of this guy so this epsilon optimizing is doesn't seem to be much of a help if i understand correctly what you're saying is that if we could figure out like epsilon optimizing actions then we would know how to act um up to epsilon one over uh, epsilon times one over one minus gamma suboptimality so that was the lemma uh, but but here uh, we already have an algorithm that can decide how to act, and somehow we want to use this algorithm to decide about the value of an arbitrary policy. Oh, I see. It, oh, it is going the non-intuitive uh, direction, but intuitively estimation should not be harder then optimization in general it is not and then in general you can use this binary search procedure here i'm just blanking on uh the details of it uh or maybe it's not that nice this reduction maybe it's just like this awkward thing that you have to assume that uh, the ergotum, the OPO ergotum is also good if you modify the R, modify the MDPs for whatever way, and like uh, that's that's a little bit too much. So, for example, if I start to modify the, I mean, under Q pi reliability, I can probably push this through, right? So if we have the features uh, and we assume that we have an OPO ergotum that is good under uh, Q pi reliability, then 
we should get a good algorithm that is uh, good for OPE uh, under QPy reliability as well. Because QPy reliability allows you to like choose any policy whatsoever. And uh, so if you restrict the MDP to those where the actions, uh, all actions lead to the same result as the target policy, <laughs> Like you don't have to discard actions. Actually, don't discard actions. The discarding actions is not good. Yeah, I think that this is how it works. So let's let's assume Q reliability, for example. It is just a little bit too much for me. Uh, and and then here, what you're going to do is that you're going to to modify. Uh, the design in such a way that okay it says give me next state for sa and then you will give next state for s and whatever action the target policy wants to choose sorry s right so you just modify it and then if you had the ability that OP works no matter the plan, provided the sample size is big enough and you have this Q ability, then this works. But now, like we modified kind of the distribution that is being used, and it's like, eh, I don't know. So, what if like we had a condition like this that? says that the minimum eigenvalue is lower bounded by one over D. That might be gone. And maybe that was required by the OPO algorithm. All right. Good. <laughs> but on the other hand, if you did not have Q by realizability, like, isn't it possible that there are MDPs where the optimal policy is realizable, but every other policy is just like really, really unrealizable? Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah. O, so OPO maybe it might be okay for OPO to return an optimal policy, but asking it to evaluate any other policy is just going to be hopeless. Or OPE, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so it depends on the yeah, it depends on the setting. Yeah, of course. True. Right. So I, yeah, I guess so. It is possible that OPO is easier than OPE, right? Under some settings. It. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a complete. Well, I don't see a comp general. No, I, I don't see a general construction at all. All right. Um, so we have these exponential lower bounds. Okay, for now, for OPE. Um, and um, this is for the finite horizon setting. But we also like our discounted horizon setting. So it turns out that uh, for the discounted horizon setting, things are even easier. Sorry, discounted infinite horizon. Oh, and so this is this is the third paper that goes in between the two. And this is by Phil and uh, Man. And I think she was added. So that's 1.5. Right. Um, so they basically look at these uh, conditions in these results and they say, well, okay, um, how about the discounted setting? Like, what happens if we have Q pi realizability and this minimum eigenvalue condition? Uh, it turns out that in the infinite horizon discounted setting, uh, these two conditions are so weak that these lower bounds become infinite. I mean, like, it's like there is an identifiability issue, in other words. Like, even in the limit of infinite data, 
you may not be able to tell apart one policy which is uh, has a value of one and another policy which has a value of zero. And the construction um, is as follows. You have two states, S0, S1, it's the usual simplest MDP. It's actually, there are no multiple actions, so it's, it's even a Markov reward process. And um, you observe no reward here, and you observe a reward of x here, and the transitions are deterministic. So the values of these states are going to be, so the value of, of state S0 is going to be gamma times x divided by one minus gamma, and the value of um, state one is going to be just x divided by one minus comma. And so this really suggests that maybe if you define the features for these states to be gamma over one minus gamma, Okay, so why? Right, so just gamma over one minus gamma for the first, one over one minus gamma for the second. Or if you want, it could be just gamma and one. Uh, maybe I, I do that. Then you can just pull out x, in this case, x over one minus gamma. And so you let's let let this be the feature matrix. So phi of S naught, it's one dimensional, is gamma, phi of S1 is one. Then we see that V star is realizable. If you want Q star realizability, you can also have that, right? Because the there is only one action. <laughs> so V star is really Q star. So we have realizability with uh, theta equals uh, x over one minus gamma. And if I only generate observations from S not only, you will never see the reward. So the data will not include the reward. Now, of course, it's impossible to de decide the value of theta. We estimate the value of any policy. Well, there is only one policy here. Uh, so no argotum, even in the limit of infinite data, if the plan only includes S0, will not suffice. And uh, what is the, the moment matrix in this case? At well, the moment matrix, this expected value of uh, you know generating samples at random from when S uh, S is equal to S not with probability one. So they just gamma square. And so So this it becomes better as gamma goes to infinity, or so gamma goes to one. Uh, you, you have that conditioned features, yet you can't estimate um, the value of this Markov reward process. If you want to make this into a decision problem, you can, right? So for the for the infinite horizon setting, there is a very simple example. This this very simple example shows that clearly uh, the condition of realizability together with uh, the usual condition that we we love in supervised learning that the moment matrix uh, 
of the features and that the data distribution is well conditioned is not going to cut it because the data is just not there. You know, of course, this problem would go away if we had trajectories, right? So, so this is for Z design. And so the question is, okay, uh, can we get the same thing for um, for pi design? But there is something interesting happening here, right? Because here, this uh, sample complexity is infinite, or like there's an identifiability problem. Let's call it identifiability. that is unidentifiable. So there are two values of x, different values of x cannot be distinguished uh, even if you have infinite data. So what happens with pi design? <clears throat> so Andrea has... Um, this this paper which has a number of results um that go after the discounted setting and and something that is uh maybe stronger than pi design so Andrea Zanette is talking about um, this policy induced query sets. So I will still call this this a Pi Design or extended Pi Design. Basically, he, he redefines this the following way. Uh, so for him, such a design is going to be an infinite sequence. So fix a state action space. So for each sample size, we are going to have a design. And this design is going to come in the form of some number of policies and then some counts So these are deterministic policies. Well, I probably should put an eye there. <clears throat> and these are counts. So the meaning of C is how many observations you want from the trajectory of this policy. And maybe, okay, like there, there should be some initial status file. It's actually important. So S1 to, uh, so S many initial states, S number of um, policies. And then, He's very permissive. He says that, okay, uh, if you choose such a plan, fix it, fix N, let just this, uh, I don't know, row tilde be row of N. So one, one of these designs with, with a total trajectory length of N. 
And then uh, let's calculate this Zn, which is going to be the set of n step, sorry, the set up, uh, set of um, reachable states. If you're starting from um, these initial states, so here is S1 of i. So you start the i's uh, policy from here. And then if you have a stochastic MDP in C, one i steps, it's going to reach a bunch of state action pairs. So you include all of those. And you do this for every start, state, policy, and count. And the relation between n and the counts is that the total number of counts, like steps along the trajectories, um, is going to be bonded by n. So you, you can't ask for too much. But if you have a stochastic dynamics, you're going to see many, many more state action pairs possibly than n. It's really permissive. So these are the states which are reachable with those many steps from those initial states with any positive probability. It doesn't matter how small. Very permissive. Since we are proving negative results still, it kind of makes sense to be permissive. So even under this permissive setting, if you're following the trajectory, think bad things are going to happen, uh, then, uh, of course, bad things are going to happen if you are more restrictive in terms of like what sampling is going to do for you. So this is clearly more powerful than if you just choose a Z design with N state action pairs. Uh, because you can clearly just choose the initial state and the policies and set KN to N. And then like you can replicate a Z design with this design. So this is at least as powerful as a Z design. And uh, in his paper, uh, he's going to assume a very strong observation model as well. He assumes that once this this Z uh, this Z is generated, uh, which is now a subset of state action pairs, uh, you observe the rewards restricted to the Z the state action pairs, and you observe the full transition dynamics corresponding to those. It's like really strong observation model. So C is how many steps you go uh, so uh, along a trajectory. Yeah. And um, So that's the observation. Um, it's much stronger than just assuming that you observe randomly one next state. You observe the f all the next states that are possible. You, you know everything. Um, and so the first um, theorem is going to be about Um, OPE is a fixed target. Um, it goes like as, as, as follows for every gamma and D um, that exist state space and an action space. Uh, such that for every row pi design uh, that was described as uh, above, um, and uh, for every 
ergotum A, uh, that is uh, sound with this constant as usual, like constant uh, approximation accuracy with uh, constant probability of error. Um, there is an MDP which is featureized and and the target such that the MDP has those states, some transitions, the rewards are as usual in zero one. Um, the features are bounded by one, they are d-dimensional. I think this is going to be a deterministic MDP. Um, yeah. Such that, okay. So here, this is similar to the second result uh, in the Long Foster Kakadi paper that under the features, the action value function of the target policy is realizable. Uh, okay, these rewards are between minus one and one. It's a minor variation. Uh, and um, the number of uh, observations that this ergotum is going to need is uh, under this design, no matter how the design was chosen. So previously, the previous results were saying that there exists a design which doesn't look that bad. So this, this says that uh, there exists this behavior policy such that this doesn't look that bad. So here it says there exists this random design that doesn't look that bad. So here the result says no matter how the design is chosen, the sample complexity is going to be uh, exponential. It's like one over two, one minus gamma to the power of D. This is, usually we write this as square root d h over 2 to the power of d that, that would be a simpler way of writing it so compared to the first result that we had where we had a to the power of h this has h to the power of d it's interesting uh also here the in the results of uh of this previous paper we had d to the power of h. So just a reminder that we had d to the power of h, a to the power of h, h, and then now we have h uh, to the power of d. <laughs> um, And uh, this result is applicable, as, as I said, for every design. So it's like, uh, if, if, even if you try to, to do the best by being clever about the sampling mechanism, it, it's really similar to the very first result that I talked about, where you choose whatever behavior policy and I can make it not generate uh, the data that you really need. Um, and here, this, this applies to uh, any design, and this 
in this very relaxed observation model, some of the price of this, if, if you can if you can call it a price, is that in this example, we have much, much bigger uh, spaces. So the state space and the action space, I guess it's like, right, is going to be the unit cube, a unit, uh, unit ball. Um, the d-dimensional unit ball. And uh, yeah, it's it's kind of instructive to, to see how this works, but I'm really running out of time. Uh, so maybe I will just start next time by showing how this works. And he has a bunch of other results which are very similar to this. Uh, the basic idea is, is something like um, this, that you can have the state space is this, uh, the sphere. And uh, the dynamics is going to be super simple. It's like you go wherever you need to go. So it's like linear than dynamics. So whatever the action chooses, you go there, it's deterministic. The target policy is going to be chosen in a way that kind of fits to the MDP, which is going to defeat the argotum. So we will have a family of MDPs, and each is parametrized by a direction or, or a vector uh, that corresponds to vector and the unit sphere. Let's call it W. And then this target policy, what it does is that it, if you're at that state S, then it projects it on W, and then it makes a step along W. So the target policy really just like project, projects on W and then makes a step. And this step is going to be, well, it's just like this one over one over gamma uh, inflation, and and this happen this this works until you reach the cap, and when you reach the cap, then you you stop there. Like the target policy is such that you stop in a cap. So this is gamma here. So when um, you're in this gamma cap section then you're going to start to receive rewards before you don't receive any rewards. So, so here you, you receive some reward. It's cleverly constructed. And uh, these caps, if gamma is close to one, are going to be really tiny in high dimension. And you can have many of them. And uh, having the ability to evaluate a, a target policy means that you can kind of figure out where these caps are. And uh, if you think about like without knowing, without using following the target policy, it's like really hard to know uh, where the caps are. So if you have to decide in advance, but you couldn't use the target policy uh, to decide uh, where to sample, then you will have no chance of finding the cap. And that's where this exponential lower bonds are coming from. So just uh, the nice thing is that, well, the features uh, as expected are going to be something simple, like just the action component of the state action pair. And uh, so things are really like cutely constructed. And then you just have this high dimensional geometry, then you can hide information in small caps. And under various settings, you, you can play this game and you can get this exponential lower bond. So he has two other results which have uh, a similar flavor, but it will be worth uh, talking about them a little bit. All right, I guess I, I stop here. 
By the way, this uh, sphere packing, this is basically sphere packing. Uh, it's the same idea as in the Jones only index throws proofs, right? It's, that's also the same thing that you can pack a sphere uh, with many vectors which are nearly orthogonal. All right. Hmm. No, th these are fixed policies, right? So you have to decide ahead of time about the policies. Um, and then um, we just follow them. And the policies don't know about the W, right? If if I can uh, use uh, the target policy, then the evaluation problem is trivial because uh, I start with you know uh, I don't know the uh, the unit vectors and I test what the target policy does for the unit vectors. Uh, maybe unit vectors scale back a little bit so that. Uh, I get information because uh, not like, yeah, if you're in a cap, like then the, you get no information. You just get back what you had um, and you don't get directional information. So first I'm going to figure out what W was uh, by uh, asking uh, what the target policy is going to play at those values. Uh, so now I have the Ws and then I can follow, right? Like. I mean, the target policy can be available, like you need to evaluate it. So it's it's available, so you can compute the W in, in effect. Uh, actually, you don't need sampling, you don't need dynamics for that. You can compute the W, but you what you can't decide is whether the W, like you can compute the W up to a sign, like you don't know whether it's up or down, right? So the negative of W is as likely as the positive of W. You don't know that. Well, actually, I, I think that you need, okay, so I, I didn't say that, but like here the reward could be plus or minus one. So you really have to, like that's like not knowing what direction to go to. Um, so if the reward is plus one, then uh, the value of the target policy is going to be uh, positive one, actually. And uh, in the other case, it's going to be negative one. and. Uh, you can't decide this without reaching the cap. And uh, you won't reach the cap uh, unless you can follow the target policy. <laughs> or like, uh, uh, unless you have a, an adaptive sampler that can go roughly in the direction of W. I mean, like once, once you know W and you have an adaptive sampler, then you can like directly ask in the cap, like what's the reward there? And then if you see it's plus one, you know what's the value of the target policy is. If you see that the reward is minus one, then you know that the value is minus one. You can actually, then you figure out everything about this MVP. So adaptive sampling uh, has an exponential advantage here. Um, Maybe I missed this, but what's stopping us from just having an exponential number of, is the number of policies fixed compared to D or something? So the, the sample complexity, so this N was uh, the sum of the number of steps that you can make along uh, with the policies. So you can't have exponential many policies because the number of steps is N at most. Yeah, sorry, that makes sense. No, that's, that makes sense <laughs> to ask that question. Yeah. All right.
Uh, there's a question in the chat. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, there were a lot of things going on in the chat, but okay, let's go from the bottom. Uh, so Fatima asks, can you explain again why Pi design is more powerful than the Z design? It was read out by. Yeah, sure. Uh, so here, a Z design was um, a number of state action pairs that you can choose. And uh, the, the sample size is n if you choose n state action pairs to observe. And the way uh, the pi design is going to be more powerful in this case is that I can just specifically choose. So if I want to replicate, uh, you know, uh, see, I want to see uh, these particular state action pairs. And there are n of them because they were in my z design. And I want to choose a pi design which guarantees that I'm going to see these guys. All right. So this is a this is my z n. I want to replicate this with a pi design. Then I can just choose these initial states. Um, um, so I can just choose k n to be n. And I can just choose s one uh, i to be s1 and then sn of i to be sn and i can choose policy pi one i such that on state one it gives me action one and then similarly choose policy pi n of i on it, such that an sn it gives me a n and with this the setup uh, and then the con and this counts like c1 i up to c n i they're all going to be chosen to be one um uh, and then what are the state action uh, pairs that are reachable with one step with these policies from these initial states well exactly those in zn right because for each of the initial states uh, like each of these guys i make one step but making that step is exactly with the action that was uh in zn so i i hope that that's clear so basically you can replicate uh we said pi design is that designs. Is that okay answer? Okay. All right. Um, were there any other things? Uh, okay, about climbing. I think that's so, that's it. That's all, all right. Okay. All right. <clears throat> 